Hello, this is Canon Gary Waddingham, and this is Holy Days from the High Plains. And today we're going to look at three holy women, desert mothers. The desert fathers have long been famous in at least certain portions of Christianity for their sayings and for their way of suggesting to us, as do the desert mothers, an entirely different way of looking at God, looking at life, looking at what's important. It's tempting to say, well, at all times and all places, people have had the same goals, the same everything. It's not true. Uh, at the time of Christ, 2000 years ago, things were different. And that difference can suggest things to us, particularly when the way that we do things in our modern area may be getting us down or not yielding what we had hoped it would yield. That's one of the great uh, gifts of Christianity to all people, I think, is the ability to suggest to them a different way of being before God. The names of the three uh, desert mothers we're going to look at today on the calendar are Sarah, Theodora, and Synclitica. They're from Egypt, and they lived during the uh, uh, fourth and fifth centuries. And what we have for them uh, mostly are some of their sayings and a few stories of what they did. Uh, they're interesting. Um, uh, one monk, for instance, came to her and said, uh, I don't know how to get rid of demons. I, I, I try to exercise demons and I, I fast and the demons come to me and, and say, we need no food. And I stay awake all night and the demons come to me and say, we never sleep. The desert mother looked at him and said, the only thing that will cast out those demons is humility. You didn't see that coming, did you? They really suggest to us a whole different way of being in the world. The picture behind me, by the way, is St. Jerome, one of the great fathers of the church who in his spare time translated the whole of scripture from Hebrew and Greek into Latin, the basis for the Vulgate. And of course, women, holy women, had to battle some of the things that women have had to battle at all times and places. A great many of them, though, did in fact have money, which they gave away like the men did before they went into uh, uh, either living by themselves in caves, cells in the Egyptian desert, or perhaps small uh, communities. In the beginning, most of them were solitary. Uh, there is a story of, of one of them, I think it was uh, Sincletica, that uh, she comes uh, to her cave and finds that there are some monks from one of the monasteries there. And, and uh, she offers them a very small basket of fruit. And they take it, take some out, and give it back to her. And uh, uh, she looks and finds that they had taken the bad fruit and left the good. And she said, truly, you are the monks of the monastery that is known for its piety. Um, again, uh, doesn't exactly impinge on our lives the way we think of things, but that's the whole point of it. They point some things to us. And the sayings of the desert fathers and mothers in general, by the way, are wonderful kinds of things. I've related often the tale of the desert fathers when uh, in one case they all came together when one of them was dying, which they often did because there was a time for truth telling. And uh, one of the monks had uh, another monk that lived with him that always stole food from him. And as that monk came near to him, to the one who was dying, the one who was dying reached out, grabbed his hands, and he said, I thank God for these hands, which taught me to depend only on Christ. Wonderful thing. They gave us some things, a great richness. This for the whole of Christendom. Sometimes we like to think that the rules and the, and the sayings of scripture, all those kinds of things, uh, are for each individual, but they're not. They're for the church. And the church is composed of millions of different individuals, and there is something there for everyone. There is a word of God there for everyone. And the desert mothers gave many of those words 
to us in this generation and to all generations to come. Let me conclude with evening prayer for this day, Thursday, the day of the Feast of the Epiphany. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. The Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For as looked with favor on his lowly servant, from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has set away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was, the beginning is now and will be forever. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. Add length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name, and day by day I will fulfill my vows. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless and keep you this evening and this night and all the rest of the days of your life.